Hi everyone, in previous lecture, we have taught our favorite rectifier, operation and analysis of our favorite rectifier. In the analysis, our favorite rectifier have got a ripple factor very high, which is equal to 1.21 and efficiency 40% only. So it is inefficient for practical application. That's why we need to improve this rectification of the circuit. That's why we go for full wave rectifier. In this class, I'm going to explain about operation and analysis of full wave rectifier. Coming to the operation of full wave rectifier. So this operation start with the circuit diagram. What is the circuit diagram for full wave rectifier? What are the components which are used in this full wave rectifier? In the full wave rectifier, it has center tap transformer and two diodes D1 and D2 and one load resistor. What is the purpose of center tap transformer? We know that uh, in the power supply block diagram, first block diagram is power uh, center uh, transformer and then rectifier and then filters and regulators. So first block is transformer. In this case, we have used this step down transformer. So what is the difference between step down transformer and a center tap transformer? When we see this uh, step down transformer, whenever we are giving this kind of AC signal, in the step down transformer can be stepped down to 230 volts to either 10 volts, 5 volts, 9 volts based on application. So this secondary step down voltage is available in the secondary coil. Now coming to the center tap transformer, in this center tap transformer, whatever the supply, AC supply is given to the primary coil that can be stepped down to required a secondary voltage. Let us take 20 volts, here it is generated. So 230 volts, 230 volts AC signal and 20 volts AC signal is generated at a secondary coil. This secondary voltage of 20 positive voltage under 20 negative voltage then this 20 volts is get off to upper secondary coil and the remaining off to bottom secondary coil. So in the center tap to transformer whatever the secondary coil voltage we have got in normal step down transformer this can be further divided into half and given to first to prior above secondary coil and second half to the below secondary coil. So this can be helpful to analysis of this full wave rectifier. So what is the first thing is whatever the voltage, this Vm voltage is a passing through the secondary coil then it gets up. So whenever 20 volts coming to secondary coil. This 10 volts is available at a above secondary coil and 10 volts available at a below secondary coil. And when we see this graphical representation of the voltage available at this center tap transformer secondary coil output. So this, this is the AC signal given to the input and you will get for pass to half cycle of the input signal, it will step down to 20 volts. Let us take. And then this 20 volts is get this 20 volts secondary coil voltage divided by 2 volts is available to the node A. This is for example node A. And this V2 by 2, which is equal to 10 volts, with the shape of the wave is 
during fast torque cycle this 10 volt is available across the upper side of the secondary coil and at the same time it will be available negative cycle negative 10 volts per second another below secondary coil and uh, during negative half cycle of the input signal minus this minus cycle minus 10 volts here it is passed to 10 volts in this way the upper and uh, lower voltage cycles of shape of the waveform should be up 180 degree phase so two things secondary coil voltage gets off that voltage available at uh, this point and uh, remaining off available at this point with uh, 180 degree phase this is about a center tap transformer this kind of center tap transformer can be helpful to get rectification of both cycles of the ac input signal so i am giving this one and uh, during pass to and negative cycle so we will achieve both cycles will rectify okay we will see in the operation how these both cycles can be conducted and uh, available across load So this is the working of center tap full wave rectifier circuit. The operation of the full wave rectifier can be simply explained by the two cases. One is during pass to off cycle, what will happen in the full wave rectifier and during negative off cycle, what will happen. Now let us see what will happen when during pass to off cycle of the AC input signal. When Pass do pass to up cycle of the AC signal is given to the primary side primary coil. Then we know that secondary will get step down pass to cycle, and this step down voltage, the rated secondary voltage V2 is get down to V2 by 2 and V2 by 2, but a minus polarity at a node B, for example, it is a node B and it is a node A. This kind of V2 by 2 signal, the shape of the positive signal this way and shape of the negative signal this way. So during pass to up cycle of the AC input signal, this kind of rated voltage divided by 2 cycle, positive cycle is available across node A. When this kind of signal is available, then it is a represented with the pass to cycle, then this is when uh, given to the P type of the PN junction diode, then pass to up cycle is connected to P type of the PN junction diode semiconductor, then it is in forward bias. When the D1 gets forward bias and it will act as short circuit, at the same time, Due to this center tap transformer, due to this center tap transformer, negative cycle, negative V2 by 2 voltage is available at, uh, at the point B. Due to which this diode D2 negative is connected to P type, negative is connected to the uh, forward uh, like P type material then it is in reverse bias whenever it is reverse bias it will be act as open circuit so in this case pass to off cycle of the ac input signal diode d1 is conducting it is forward bias and d1 is conducting and d2 is in reverse bias and act as open circuit so when it is open circuit then current flow through secondary coil and uh, this secondary coil and d1 and uh, which is connected to load resistor rl then the current flow through d1 and rl which is connected to ground when current flowing through the rl whatever the instantaneous voltage of the positive up cycle passing through the rl you will get the instantaneous voltage of the output so I instantaneous current passing through the RL, you will get same voltage available across the load. Similarly, if 
this is the current flow direction and you will get pass stop cycle what happen when negative ac signal is given to the transformer when negative ac signal is given to the transformer which is nothing but during second half cycle during negative half cycle of the ac input signal during negative half cycle of the ac input signal negative v2 by 2 voltage is available at node a which is represented by this one negative and the same v2 minus v2 by 2 voltage is available in positive direction at node b when this negative direction negative cycle exists at node a this will make this diode in reverse bias when reverse bias it will act as open circuit whatever the positive voltage available at a node b which makes this d2 diode will be will make this d2 diode in forward bias and it will act as a short circuit so during negative half cycle of the ac input signal diode d2 is d2 is conducting and d1 is not conducting and it will be open circuit then current flow in the loop is through secondary coil and a diode d2 and a load resistor when passing through the load resistor the instantaneous current passing through the load resistor you will get the positive cycle in the in this in this period also so you will get a positive output so in earlier case during positive half cycle of the ac signal you will get this case, this waveform in the output during negative half cycle of the ac signal okay again you will get the the same amount of instantaneous voltage positive voltage available across the load so that whenever we are giving positive cycle negative cycle and positive cycle negative cycle you will get during positive half cycle you will get positive and then during negative half cycle also you will get rectified output positive half output then this way in full wave rectifier both cycles have rectified and you will get the this kind of waveform so this is the way how in full wave rectifier will conduct both cycles positive cycle and negative cycle the diagram which represents the negative cycle as shown in the figure the output voltage measured at node c with respect to ground with respect to ground is equal to the voltage node at b with respect to ground because whenever it is both this point and this point it is short circuit point node b and node c are same polarity when whatever the voltage across voltage available across the point c with respect to ground is equal to like a point b with respect to ground this point this point same then voltage across c with ground voltage across b with ground is same now coming to the analysis of full wave rectifier as i said the full wave rectifier input signal this is the input signal and full wave rectifier output signal which conducts both cycles so this case if you measure the if you take the x axis in time period and y axis is voltage if it is input voltage this y axis is vi if it is output voltage y axis is v not some so what is the, this is the one full cycle so capital t represents the fundamental time period for this input signal whenever if you take the output of the full wave rectifier the time period for this total waveform is this way well, this much only because the same waveform is repeated again so now the time period for this one when the time period gets to the fundamental time period of input signal which is equal to t by 2 then it's uh, may it's may it's uh, like a uh, its time period only capital t by 2 where t by t is the fundamental time period for input signal 
if you measure this waveform in terms of radians when we measure in terms of radians then the input waveform represented with 0 pi 2 pi in the output of the rectifier so you will get 0 pi 2 pi what is the time period now 0 to pi only 0 to pi only so because that pi pi to 2 pi again it will repeat to the same signal so now what is the time period for rectified full wave rectified output is pi only in the mathematical analysis when we consider the integration we will consider the signal for full wave rectifier is this signal only this is the waveform so 0 to pi only we need to consider now coming to the analysis of full wave rectifier consider an ac sinusoidal input signal v of t which is equal to vm sin omega t this kind of assumption we can take for the ac input signal of the rectified input so and then the rectified output is as shown in the figure this also we can consider it is like a sinusoidal but uh, the factors the components which are in the output signal will be different than the input signal now find the vdc dc voltage find the rms voltage and ripple factor efficiency and peak inverse voltage once we find these parameters then we can say that this full wave rectifier is useful for practical application or not so now one by one let us take see that what is the value of vdc and vrms the ripple factor efficiency and peak inverse voltage we know that from the basic definition of average value of the output voltage what is the average value of this continuous instantaneous output voltage the average is nothing but integration of this all points from this 0 to pi and divided by in time interval 0 pi 1 by pi so that is what we have taken we average or we dc is equal to 1 by pi pi is the time period for rectified full wave rectified output and integral 0 to pi vm sin omega t is the signal that we assumed initially that is in signal for rectified input and output so vm sin omega t d omega t where omega t is nothing but time period in radians uh, frequency in radians so here vm is the constant term then take left side and vm by pi integral 0 to pi sin omega t d omega t if you integrate this sin term then you will get sin integration of sin is nothing but cos omega t and apply the limits upper limit pi lower limit 0 cos pi minus cos 0 minus of cos pi minus cos 0 because minus nothing but sin sin theta which is equal to minus cos theta so minus cos pi is minus 1 minus cos 0 is 1 so minus 1 minus 1 minus 2 of minus 1 you will get 2 so finally what is the dc dc voltage for full wave rectifier is 2 into vm by pi which is nothing but doubles the dc voltage we got in half wave rectifier half wave rectifier dc voltage is equal to vm by pi now we got uh, 2 vm by pi then once we know the vdc we also find out what is the dc current idc whenever that uh, current flowing the rectified output flowing through the load resistor then we will find out idc what is the idc current flow in the load resistor so well, idc is nothing but actually vdc divided by rl vdc is equal to 2 vm by pi into rl so we know that this when we consider this vm by pi vm by rl is equal to im then it will be treated as idc is equal to 2 im by pi so the dc current flowing through the load is equal to 2 im by pi similarly in deriving the average value of the output voltage and load current we have assumed that the diode is used in rectifier circuit is an ideal one 
for the ideal case it has zero forward resistance and infinite reverse resistance but however in practical uh, circuit it's not that that zero forward resistance and infinite reverse resistance so if rf is the diode forward resistance then average output voltage across the load is rather than 2 vm by pi it should be 2 vm by pi minus idc into rf so in the diagram when we see this diagram so when we measure the dc voltage across c with respect to ground either it is conducted in d1 or d2 let us take d2 so this d2 if the diode is ideal no forward resistance zero resistance so directly when we apply the kvl whatever the voltage of vb which is equal to vc only but when we consider this drop uh, resistance uh, it is a if it is a diode d2 is a practical diode then what the voltage drop across this diode so what will be the total voltage across the load means total voltage given and drop is subtracted and you will get the what uh, total vdc voltage across the load so the, this is what uh, so 2 vm by pi is the total dc voltage across, measured across load without a, a forward resistance resistance of the diode if it is considered that resistance then the drop across the forward resistance will be subtracted from this 2 vm by pi then this is what total vdc and similarly idc is equal to 2 vm by pi into rl plus rf so uh, rf nothing but forward resistance diode of the diode if you take another case if ac input signal is applied through the transformer then it is necessary to include the secondary winding resistance in the relation of the average value of the output voltage and the current in this case average value of the output voltage is 2 vm by pi minus idc flowing through the rf and rl so the drop across secondary winding and drop across forward resistance can be subtracted from original 2 vm by pi so 2 vm by pi minus idc into rf plus rl then idc is also is equal to 2 vm by pi rf rl rf plus rl plus rs if uh, secondary coil resistance assume that it is ideal assume that zero cancel it and forward resistance assume that ideal diode zero gets zero then only 2 vm by pi into rl it is normal idc current flowing through the load so so far we have find dc voltage vdc is equal to vm by pi per ideal case and 2 vm by pi minus drop across secondary coil and diode forward resistance now we will measure that what will be the rms value of the rectified output so rms value of the rectified output means simply we can say that what will be the voltage uh, ac voltage across rectified output because rectified output having both the ac component and dc component ac component measured with the rms value so now we will find out what will be the ac component by uh, by rms value okay so this uh, rms value root mean square of the rectified output root mean nothing but 1 by pi and signal and a square nothing but signal square vm square sin square omega t this is the representation for rms when we perform this v rms to this rectified output then so in order to find out the vrms take the constant term to the left side vm square by pi integral 0 to pi because our rectified output time period is pi under sin square omega t and also we need to in in terms uh, in order to get the uh, in order to minimize this one and find out the value of this vrms expand this sin square omega t in terms of cos cos terms so remove these square terms how to remove the square terms by substituting 1 minus cos 2 omega t by 2 when we substitute this one and then apply the limits then 
then when we apply the limits there are two terms here 1 by 2 minus cos 2 omega t by 2 in the 1 by 2 term integral 1 by 2 nothing but integral 1 nothing but omega t 1 by 2 take common omega t and apply the limits 0 to pi this is the first term and what about the second term integral cos you will get my sin so sin in this sin term for example sin omega 2 omega t by 4 so this sin term applied with the limits lower and upper the upper limit you will get 0 lower limit you will get 0 sin pi 0 sin 0 0 the entire this term gets 0 so only we can focus on here first term 1 by 2 substitute the upper limit in the omega t plus pi minus lower limit 0 so you will get pi by 2 so finally whatever the entire this box you will get pi by 2 answer so substitute that pi by 2 in the equation then square root of vm square by 2 by pi into pi by 2 pi pi cancel you will get pi vm square by 2 square root of vm square by 2 which is nothing but vm by root 2 so we are ms is equal to vm by root 2 so what is the rms value of the rectified output is vm by root 2 and uh, the output we, we got maximum voltage by root 2 because in this output uh, over a period it looks like complete cycle sinusoidal signal so complete uh, like a no zero signal so that's why it looks like a the sinusoidal signal so what will be the rms value for this one is vm by root 2 Now, it is required to find out the most important parameter which will decide that with that particular rectifier having a more DC component or not and a less uh, AC components or not. That is what ripple factor. This is most important factor. So now we will find out what will be the ripple factor for this uh, full wave rectifier output. So what is general definition for this ripple factor? Ripple factor is a ratio of AC component present in the rectified output divided by DC component. That AC component presented in the rectified output represented by VR RMS. We always AC component measured in RMS. That's why the ripple of that uh, AC component measured uh, with the factor VR RMS and divided by VDC. So it is the ratio of VR RMS by VDC. What is the equivalent mathematical equation for VR RMS of the rectified output is square root of VRMS square minus VDC square divided by VDC. When we uh, take this VDC term inside the uh, square root, then you will get VRMS square minus VDC square divided by VDC square. So when VDC, VDC is cancelled in the second term, you will get 1. So final this uh, ripple factor is nothing but square root of VRMS by VDC whole square minus 1. This representation of the ripple factor is useful for finding the problems. So the ripple factor in terms of VRMS, VDC, that's why first we find out VRMS of the rectified output and find the VDC and then which are substitute in the ripple factor. In the problems also, they have given problem. So first we need to find out VDC, VRMS and then substitute in the ripple factor, you will get the answer. Now substitute whatever the uh, VDC and VRMS value of the full wave rectified output. So substitute VRMS, VRMS you got Vm by root 2 and VDC we got 2 Vm by pi. Substitute this one and square minus 1, you will get pi square by 8. So Vm, Vm cancel and then 1 by root 2 divided by 2 by pi, pi gets numerator and root 2 gets denominator, then pi square by 2 root 2 whole square, you will get pi square by 8 minus 1, so which is equal to 0 0.483. When we consider in percentage multiplied into 100, you will get 48.3%. So 
So when we compare with the half wave rectifier, you got 48% only of this AC component. Whereas in half wave rectifier, it, it has uh, 121% or 1.21 AC component available presented in the half wave rectifier output. So that has changed from half wave rectifier to full wave rectifier. So 1.21 for half wave rectifier and now 0 0.483. So this guy, this reduction happened by improving the circuit with the increasing of one diode and a used center tap transformer. And coming to the efficiency. Coming to the efficiency. Efficiency which decides that that particular circuit, particular rectifier is efficient to rectification or not. So simply it is a ratio of the DC output power delivered to the load to the AC input power. So we have given AC input signal to the rectifier. We got a rectified output. So how much DC component we have received or we have got in the rectified output by giving AC input signal. It is simple analysis, uh, simple analysis with the student marks. So what is the uh, what is the percentage of student marks for a particular subject? So we have conducted 100 marks exam. So student have got uh, uh, 60 marks. So 60 divided by the conducting marks, maximum marks is 100. So we are providing 100% of a AC input signal. So rectified output have got some AC component, DC component. So how much uh, DC component, perfect DC component we have got with the rectifier by measuring the efficiency. So which is represented by ratio of DC power delivered to the load to the AC input power. <coughs> the efficiency signifies that the outcome of the rectifier circuit to output DC power in comparison to the AC input power. So PDC divided by PAC is the formula for efficiency. So P nothing but power, DC power divided by AC power. So we have DC voltage under D RMS voltage. So by considering this PDC and PAC in terms of v voltage and resistor or current and resistors, when we consider voltage and resistor, P is equal to ratio of V square by R. So V square nothing but DC, VDC nothing but DC voltage. So VDC square by RL and it is AC power. So always measure in RMS, VRMS square by RL. These two factors constants gets cancelled. Then substitute DC, uh, DC voltage for full wave rectifier 2 VM by pi and VRMS voltage VM by root 2 and whole square. And then you will get 8 by pi square, which is equal to factor 0 0.812. In percentage, the PDC divided by PAC into 100, we got 81.2 uh, percentage. So when we compare with the half wave rectifier, we have only 40.6 percentage uh, DC power delivered to the load. So compare with the full wave, uh, compared to full wave rectifier, so it got uh, it, we achieved 81.2 percentage. That is contrast between the efficiency which uh, uh, we achieved from half wave rectifier to efficiency we achieved from full wave rectifier. So that kind of change, that kind of improvement happened in this full wave rectifier. Peak inverse voltage is 2 Vm. The peak inverse voltage is a factor for the reverse biased diode in the rectifier. In, in half wave rectifier only one diode is used. So in positive half cycle it will be conducted. In during neutral off cycle, it is in uh, open circuit. When it is open circuit, what will be the maximum reverse voltage available across the diode? So that reverse voltage measured by peak inverse voltage. So in half wave rectifier, we measure Vm only. But whereas in full wave rectifier, during both cycles, one time, uh, during positive half cycle, we'll get Vm. And during neutral off cycle, we have got Vm. Total reverse voltage or peak inverse voltage we got from this full wave rectifier is 2 Vm. These parameters which will help us 
how the flow rectifier is useful for practical applications by seeing this parameter. So it is more than uh, fast percentage, just like so it it almost uh, it is a good achievable uh, DC from the flow rectifier output. In this way, we uh, we get uh, what is the importance, what is the improvement in the full wire rectifier output. So we can say that in the circuit connection, we require center tap transformer and two diodes, which is connected to load resistor. And uh, when we use this kind of circuit, we get ripple factor only forty percent and efficiency 81.2 percentage and what will be the frequency for this one is the input frequency input is this is the input signal and this is the output to rectified output so whatever the whatever the fundamental time period capital t which is represented at 1 by t f is equal to 1 by t in terms of frequency f is equal to 1 by t and then what is the frequency for full wave rectified output is this will only be t by 2 so whenever it is t by 2 so it is uh, our time period is gets up then automatically frequencies doubles so what is the output frequency is 2 into input frequency the frequency of the rectified output is equal to 2 times of input frequency in the full wave rectified output this is what about full wave rectifier operation under the mathematical equation for full wave rectifier. Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.